I'm Lottie. I'm Margaret. And we've been traveling in this van for two months now. It is not our van, and so we're gonna give you an objective tour and design review. Because we're van design obsessed. And we have a lot to talk about. This is a Van Promaster 2019. This is pretty commonly used van for van conversions. We like them a lot because compared to Sprinters, these are actually so much boxier and have more internal space. And they're actually pretty affordable. In Europe, these are known as a Fiat Ducado, Peugeot Boxer or Citroen Jumper. On the roof, you can see extruded aluminum rack with 550 watt solar panels, flexible solar panels. And you can also see two Max Air Fan vans. There is a water tank. It's a hundred liter. You can see it from the back. It's external. We like them a lot because it just saves so much space inside. Gray water is around 60 liters, I think. And it works pretty well for showers too. Now let's get to the meat of the design. Follow me. We have a lagoon table here on the passenger seat. And then we also have a permanent fold down table that you can use in the laptop. Because as you can see, both seats swivel. We believe this is a vital part of the design. Having at least one swivel seat completely opens up the space and gives you an extra seating spot. So you can also be out of the way when the other person is inside and navigating the layout. Two shelving units here. This was all custom cut out as well. And then in the cab, we have an updated stereo system with a reversing camera and one of the more important aspects is this step. If you have a swivel seat that's lifted and you are turning around and your feet don't touch the ground, it becomes so quickly uncomfortable and you become distracted. You're constantly shifting around. You lose, like your feet get all tingly. It's super important that in all the seating in the van, you have your feet flat on the ground. Without this step, that wouldn't be possible. Underneath the passenger seat, there's also a Wobasto heater, which is vital for mornings and evenings, especially in the fall, winter, and spring. And then we also have USB chargers on both sides of the seats, so you can be charging your phone without the van turned on. This is a live edge table made by Walls Woodworks. We absolutely love this. This matches the countertop and also along the bed, the siding, which we really like. And this is more of a solid lagoon table mount. We actually think the lighter, the better when it comes to a lot of these tabletops or else they tend to tilt and it's a less weight that you can put on them because when you're working, you're leaning forward quite a lot. So it's important that everything is lightweight and stable. These seats were all reupholstered by Climb Entertainment and they are leather. It also matches the couch that we have in the back that we'll get to soon. There are pros and cons to leather. The great thing about leather is it will withstand a lot of wear and tear. You don't see any damage on it. It's easy to keep clean. The con is on really sweaty hot days, you stick to it. So always keep these types of things in, in mind when you're picking out what you want your seat to feel like when you're sitting. Cause right now I'm very comfortable, but if it were hundred degrees out, I wouldn't be. Car also has Apple Play and we added these custom magnets into the cab. This is super important for when you're doing GPS or when you're driving, changing music, to have something really quickly available for you. There's all different types, but we don't like the clamps. We want something that you can easily add and remove. In the overhead, we have sweatshirts, towels, and then we also have this toiletry unit. That's what I've been calling it. It's where I've been storing like makeup, any sorts of odds and ends. We have a lot of Purell, Lottie's shaving kit, all of that that we'll need. And then above us, we have the first of two Max Air fans. 
The Max Air fans are really effective, but we, what we've noticed with some of these like automatic and more advanced Max Air fans is they have a sensor for moisture and they also have some odd detections. So they will auto shut or some of them are known to malfunction. We believe for a lot of these roof windows, it's always better to keep it a little bit basic and not have too many auto functions that you can disagree with. For me as a van builder, this is a really respectable and innovative approach to cooking in a van. And this is, this is a really compact galley unit. And I want to show you step by step how complex this module is. Let's begin with the fridge. It's on a slide, it has a latch right here and a top loading fridge, two sections slides fully out. You have two separate uh, compartment boxes and you can set the temperature separately. So that can be a freezer, freezer, fridge, 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 freezer, whatever you decide to have. We're not the biggest fans of top loading fridges and this experience only confirmed what we thought before. There's multiple reasons, especially with this particular design. It's just too much hassle, just sliding out, unlocking the latch, opening the lid, putting everything out, grabbing the thing at the very bottom, loading everything back, closing, closing the latch, sliding it in. It's just so much easier to just open, grab what you need and close. There is always a big argument about power efficiency. I don't believe any of that. Because the amount of time you need to keep it open and grab everything out, you lose all the, uh, all the cold anyways. And even though I would always prefer practicality over few lost watts. I can actually sit on this because these are on 500 pound drawer slides and could seat a few people if there was just like a few cushions here, which is nice extra seating. But I want to remind you guys, the reason that we're here is we were invited to test this out to then give the company feedback. So then when we're bringing this van back to them, they're able to do some updates, do some changes, everything that we're telling them that we loved or that we didn't like, they're able to then move forward and capitalize on for the next build and for renovations for this van, which will be for sale at the end of our trip. This is a beautiful solid wood acacia countertop that is a massive like semi-industrial five members family sink. Faucet, beautiful for washing dishes. You have a control panel for lights, water pump right here and outlets for 120 volts. There's plenty of storage in this galley. There are three drawers on a hundred percent pullout slides so you have access to everything the top drawers this one is fake and you'll see why right after and this one is pretty cool because you have this massing chopping board right there extending your counter space when you work right here and also when you chop things and peel things you have this silicone bowl so you can just scrape all your offcuts right in there and then you take it out Pour it right over the countertop and let your wife clean it all. <laughs> You're such a... <laughs> then you can just collapse the whole thing, put it back in. <whistles> and slide the whole thing back. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> we were really excited to see if it was possible to do the push to open because we hadn't seen anybody doing push to open cabinets at all during van life. And it was an opportunity to experiment and then we'd be able to bring the van back and say if it worked or if it didn't. Unfortunately, after going over a few very bumpy roads, the push to open did not withstand the turbulence. So that's when we encourage everybody to employ latches on your van and on all of the drawers, which these guys will be doing when we return the van in a few weeks. You'll see that Lottie and I do a lot of smoothies. Like Lottie has a smoothie for breakfast every morning. And I think van lifers catch a lot of flack for doing the smoothie thing because it's been kind of hippy dippy. But the reason we do it is because it's dishes, nothing, all in a cup, quick nutrients, fast mm -hmm. breakfast, and then you move on with your life only having to wash one cup. Mm. This van has a big lithium power bank, which all the appliances are run from. So that power bank has a Bluetooth BMS, so I can just connect and uh, check what is actually happening down there. How much is the draw, how much we are charging from the solar panel. Now, that being said, this van has multiple killer features and this is one of them. Induction cooktop. No problems with running out of gas anymore and it's really cool when cooking to see how much the power consumption actually is. So now based on experience I can tell you that frying eggs it roughly takes 500 watt hours and if you fry veg or something uh, like a pasta or rice, that would probably take close to one kilowatt hours. So that should help you design your own power bank if you're planning on cooking on electricity. You've been waiting to ride across the land like the futuristic human you are. Cyberbike. To reach the top of the mountain without breaking a sweat. The Cyberbike calls you. To ride silently through the forests, trails, hilltops, and deserts. It's what you're missing. And now you can build it yourself in the comfort of your own home. At mysuperebike.com, you can choose which powerful e-bike is best for you. Each e-bike bundle includes video guides and parts lists, thoroughly guiding you through the process of building your own electric bike. Order parts straight from suppliers and watch how each component is rightfully assembled. Then you can be the DIY master. You can conquer the future. Now let's show you the wet room. A wet room means it is both for showering and for toilet. So first off, you can see this door. I was skeptical at first, but it was a, just a few dollars at Home Depot and it is so durable and did the job so well for us and very easy to use. So let me open it up, show you what's inside. The whole floor of this wet room was custom built and it also has a porta potty style toilet. Now there is a lot of chat in the van community about what kind of toilet is best. There is loads of options to choose from. Porta potties require chemicals and we actually faced a little bit of a struggle getting our hands on the appropriate chemicals so you're not A, smelling the chemicals in a tiny space or smelling your business. So. The best way to avoid scent, in our opinion, is composting toilets. Now there's so many different types that you can choose from, but we had porta potty this trip. It worked for what we needed, but it's not our preference. 
this was plenty of shower space for us. We had a very easy time. As you can see, it has its own light and we were actually here in the US when they were building this shower. So you can see that in our previous video. And when we were there, they were planning on putting a recirculating shower in this van. We were strongly against the recirculating shower for multiple reasons that we think most people don't even realize. It's actually so much more water and power inefficient than a normal shower because you need so much more water in a system to have enough to recirculate and also as it recirculates you need to heat up the water otherwise it cools down by touching all the surfaces along the way so for all the compromises we take as a van lifers this is over the top unnecessary in our subjective opinion Then we come over to our main storage hub. Originally up here was a microwave that can still be added in when we bring the van back, but Vladi and I usually don't cook or eat with microwaves, so we wanted to use this as extra storage space. So we have some storage up here, storage along here as well, and then inside these drawers, we keep our food. extra bits and bobs in here, kind of like a junk drawer. Then in down here, we keep some of our bedding for the bed that doesn't fit inside of the roll up that we'll show you. And then on the very bottom, we have shoes and laundry. I'm a big fan of these overhead units and a LED system. So this is routered and polished acrylic to be transparent and LED behind, obviously that creates this beautiful environment. One single upgrade would be cool to have an RGB in there so you can also create moods, but hey, that might actually happen in somebody else's van who is currently building one in Europe. These acrylic doors are really beautiful. I love them. These were cut on a CNC in one go and you can just easily access all the cooking equipment here or my massive, massive wardrobe right here. Obviously, big advantage of sliding doors that you only access half of the unit at a time. For this, Margaret's side, I think, is a little bit more organized. I also have more clothes. This bench is absolutely beautiful, repolstered again by Climb Entertainment. They did a phenomenal job. Below this unit is all the electronics. There is aircon, there is inverter, there is a solar regulator, there is a lithium power bank. All of that is hidden right there. Below this is all the water system. It's a water heater uh, for showers and for washing dishes. And you can see the inlet for the water tank is inside here. This was a new experience. We see people in the community do it often that they have inlets inside and we do hate it 100% because it's always messy. There's always some dripping that goes under cabinetry when you fill up the water. In a colder months, you just need to open the first door first to open the second door. So that means all the accumulated heat is just immediately flies away. You're also showing everybody your personal space when you're getting water. It's just so much easier to have the outlet outside. When you're cutting holes for the roof windows and, and doing all of these major fit outs, one little hole is nothing extreme. This is one of the mega wow factors of this van, and that is the working space. Comes on, and it can extend all the way towards you too, or you can push it back and be facing more forward. And then you have different storage underneath the tables. So this is Lottie's drawer where he keeps all of his computer stuff. This is where I keep some of my stuff. And then we have our formal documents and hard drives here on the end. We were also using this space as a makeshift 
safe whenever we were leaving the van. You always want to have hiding spots for your valuables. And we know that this is completely set inside that if anyone does break into the van, they won't be able to find our laptops in here very easily. Having this big of a desk was awesome. It was very easy to work two people here. There are outlets all around, one to the left, one that's actually in the table and one here as well. The only thing that would really step up this working space would be to have an extra additional cushion that was maybe stored here during the day that could go here so you can lean all the way back and relax a little bit more comfortably when you're working. The reason that that cushion isn't there now is because this is used as a platform to support the bed when it's folded all the way down. And then there are these awesome work lights to make sure that you have a nice illuminated space, especially in the evenings. And there is also this mode for a romance. Money. Now this is by far the most innovative bed solution that we have seen. It's so creative. As you can see right now, it's actually being held up by one of uh, the clamps that we took from the workshop. And that's just because right now the team is brainstorming different latches that they want to implement into this burrito bed, which kind of gives away the name. This is called a burrito bed and it is supported by the table that holds over 500 pounds and additionally this. So let me show you how it works. Slides this all the way to the middle. Look at that custom headboard. <laughs> Pretty easy. This just holds everything into place. This has been a really cool first version of a burrito bed. We haven't seen this anywhere. How tall am I? 6.3? You're 6'4", six honey. I thought you were 6'2 for a so year. I'm 6'4". So, four. so six four. this is, a lot of people ask, this is how I fit. This is how I fit normally when I sleep. And this is how I compensate it. No, that's not. You, <laughs> you sleep diagonal now. <laughs> and this is how it's the best. Set up the bed. Crawl up. We keep our pillows here. And then in one of the drawers here is where we keep our duvet. One of the things that I do really love about this convertible bedding system is that we're not sleeping on any cracks and the only things that we need to take out are pillows and duvet. If this all folded up together, that would be the absolute dream. But like I said, this is prototype number one. There's obviously compromises with uh, convertible beds and after having this two months experience with such a convertible bed, we're definitely staying with fixed bed. Here's my reasoning. We are designing highly ergonomic working conditions in our van on a quality seats we already have in there that are on swivels. Folding and unfolding the bed every single time you want to use it becomes annoying and um, especially you have always these thoughts that when you finish driving or when you just are after lunch and you want to scroll on your phone, read a book or work on a laptop in a bed, we never decided to convert the bed so we can lie down on it for 10 minutes. And this is what I see as the biggest benefit of living in a van, that you always have these comfortable conditions that bed accessible calling you anytime you want. In my personal opinion, I would not do convertible bed unless I have a really good reasoning for alternative storage, for extra seating for guests, or when you travel with kids and you need extra bed underneath. What we did instead, 
that we kept our fixed bed accessible anytime with a storage for electric bikes right under and instead we access the space by linear actuators on remote control so you just press the button the whole bed lifts up you take the bikes take what you need and put the back bed down that was really convenient really practical and we are definitely sticking to the same bed design in this current van build for most windows it's easier to have some sort of magnetic blinds so that's what we ended up making when we were picking up the van very simple to work just unfold done blackout for when at night time and chrome on the other side during the day It's time for the final evaluation. So after living in this camper van for two months, being hyper aware of design, having done our own van builds, what do we think of this camper van? What are the pros and what are the cons and why? I'll be sharing the cons of the van and Lottie will share some of the pros. Overhead units, acrylic sliding doors, and LEDs. Absolutely love it. Everything is white. It took me a long time to wipe and clean everything so it, we don't look like dirty hippies. But if you think about it, you don't sleep in a white sleeping bag. You don't have a white tent because white shows dirt really quickly, especially when you're in and out of the outdoors so often. Pull out stove, absolutely amazing. Safe space, extends the counter space. Love it. Shockingly, one of our cons, this chopping board. It's so innovative and so creative and cool, but what we didn't expect is first, it blocks being able to get to these drawers underneath. You have to step back and also the whole passageway is taken up and you can't close it usually because there's a lot of food here. So you're kind of having to do this shimmy. The location is the only issue with this because otherwise this is absolutely epic conceptually. 100 liters water tank is absolutely perfect it lasts us a really long time and especially we prefer mounting them outside of the van because you just save that valuable space inside of the camper van on the fridge and we already talked about this a little bit too much two roof vents are critically important for van life for condensation removal for healthy air circulation absolutely must one brings the air in the other one brings the air out so it creates this natural circulation takes away the condensation and you always have the fresh air that's why you go camping to be outside and have the forest fresh air straight pumped into your lungs when you're sleeping <laughs> final con is the hallway and the size of the hallway kind of looping into having a hallway layout when you are two people you are needing to pass each other quite a lot and this can get stuffy the size of your countertop and the size of your storage these can all be modified you're not in a normal house this is prime real estate where you are standing and how you are moving in a van is the most important part of a layout. You want to make sure that two people can move naturally. And for us, we were squeezing quite a lot. So that can build up a fair amount of frustration. So if this were just a little bit thinner, or if this were just a little bit thinner, it wouldn't have been an issue. We can't stress enough how important quality van layout is. This needs to be tailored like a suit. This is highly personal. Whether you are climber, whether you're a biker, whether you work on a computer a lot or not, every single aspect of the layout needs to be tailored for your needs. Because if it's not, it bugs you every single time you do compromises. It bugs you every single time you're a little bit uncomfortable in a, in a habits you do daily. And that slowly builds up day after day up until you burn out. Bad layouts lead to burnout because you're already dealing with micro inconveniences on the road, such as collecting your own water, being hyper aware of your electricity. If it starts bugging you that you can't move around your kitchen easily or you don't have enough food storage, you'll hate van life quickly. <laughs> Having thoughtful design is the most important part of your build. And if you wanna learn more about how we design and our thought process, plus follow along with some 
high class, first class tradesmanship, you need to follow our van build show where we're taking you through the process of designing our Fiat Ducato. This is a very innovative build. It's already becoming super legendary and notorious in the van build community. And we know that we are just getting started. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and see everything that we have planned for our own ultimate camper van. We're having a one kilowatt solar tiltable panel. We're having security cameras. We're having a integrated 3D printer inside of the van. We have a <laughs> great working spot. It's a so much interesting stuff and we highly recommend you should follow. Bringing this back from the over analytical universe back to earth this is absolutely mind-blowing innovative van full of cool features and is layout others only dream of we were so lucky to be testing this and remember this was what was expected from us that we would come in and we would give honest feedback because now we're going to bring this back to the guys they're going to be able to add all sorts of updates and to stress again an updated version of this van is for sale make sure to check out the description don't forget to subscribe and the next video is building we're going back to europe to finish our van and see millina <laughs>